Same for you. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, Monday, December 22nd, this is the scheduled meeting of the Griggs County Commission. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag. flag of the United America. States of America, and to the republic for which, which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We did that one, Al Capello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, roll call. Avril. Here. Tranby. Here. Zorn. Here. Adlin. Here. And Wakefield's here. Have a look at the December 8th meeting minutes, if you would. December 8th, January 8th. What's that? January 8th, you mean? January 8th, yeah. What am I looking at? You said December 8th. That's what, that's what I got. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was in December 2. <laughs> Let's make a correction to that, yes, January 8th. This is the right agenda though, right? This is, yeah. yep. Oh. You just didn't change the heading of it? Just did heading of it, so it's the right one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Monday. I make a motion to approve the agenda. Yeah, hang on, we gotta get the right, <laughs> we gotta get the right thing here going here. Okay, so we, uh, there's a correction. This is the January 8th meeting, of course. And now if you could all have a look at the agenda, please. Looks like whatever you put in front of me, I read. <laughs> I'll remember that. Sorry about that. <laughs> We have a motion by Tranby to approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second to that? I'll second it. Second by Avril. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Agenda approved. Now we'll have a look at the December 8th meeting minutes. January 8th. January. January. No, no. December 22nd meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. No. January 8th. It says January 8th. It says January 8th. <laughs> your last meeting was the... Yeah, Jan January, January 8th. 8th. Yeah, yeah. The last one. Was the last meeting. Correct. So... What does it say in the minutes? It's January 8th above it anyway. Yeah, it does. Okay. We'll get back on track here. That's the only reason why I was able to catch it because it said it right above it. So. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. I make a motion to accept the minutes and dispense with the reading. Motion by Edlin to accept the minutes as presented and dispense with the reading. Is there a second to that? I'll second it. Second by Avril. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. January 8th, meeting minutes approved. All right, bills. <laughs> um, Aaron Burst is here to discuss with you guys further on the County Commissioners Association dues. Um, um, it is not. Um, it is not in your bills because there was a miscommunication between me and um, Chelsea. She did write the check at the last meeting. Um, I did contact them. It's we can get them to credit it back if you guys desire not to pay it um, but i just wanted to let you know the check was written it did go out they do have it but it can be it reissued back to us 
So I look, it, it's not included in the budget for 2024. For, for, so, the, for this year's for budget. Year. Right, yeah. So it's, it is really a non issue. This, if, if you want to take that under consideration when we do the budgets in May, that's fine. But we have a budget to stick to, and we haven't been doing a very good job here as of late. So even if it's not in the way, Aaron, I guess, showed up today just to speak with you guys about it. So well, even I, if you I, don't consider it, is that fine if you? No, yeah. I mean, he can certainly. You can certainly. Uh, we can certainly have the uh, discussion, and we can consider it for the upcoming budget if that's fine with you guys. Can you, can, can we have him speak? Sure. 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 Aaron. Yeah, yeah, that, I understand, Mr. Chairman. Hey, thank you, and I know you got a ton of stuff to do, so I'll be brief. I get it. It's not in the. Can you hear me? Barely. 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 We're going to turn it up on our end, so hold Give on. Give us a second here. Okay. Better? No. Sam, <laughs> go some more. Get some more. I don't. I don't know how. Which one? Oh. Can you call Travis? Yeah. He's here. These cars. It's locked the way it looks. Zoo map has got a lock padlock on it. Unless you want to speak real loud, Aaron. <laughs> Won't help. Yeah, yeah, I'll, just, I'll just yell. Everybody in the office will think I'm freaking out. <laughs> no, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. <laughs> it didn't help anymore. Of course, Aaron. It's still low. Oh, it doesn't? Okay. Trav's coming in. Yeah. It's a busy. Speak. Now, now he's muted. Yeah, now we got now he's muted. <laughs> God, I just love TikTok. Oh, you got to love him on this. Yeah, it's funny morning. Now you figured it out? <laughs> no <Nobody> demeanings here. <laughs> hey, Travis. Hello. You can't hear him. Can't hear him? I mean, we can hear him, but it's very low. Right. Well, okay. Aaron, try it all. Yeah, can it, is that any better? There we go. There, there we go. It's better. A couple there of more. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I, I heard the conversation uh, with it not being in the budget. Totally respect that. So I'm, I'm not even going to waste your time. I know you got a ton of extra things going on. There's a ton of moving parts in Bismarck right now. The governor just announced he's not running for re-election, uh, and that's setting off a chain of events. So there's going to be a ton of... Uh, political activity for uh, for us today. I'll, I'll just leave you uh, with this. I apologize if you've never felt the County Commissioners Association uh, has served your needs. I think we're going to make some strides on that uh, this year to be more active. Uh, I do encourage you to sign up for our March 19th and 20th conference, which is just county commissioners. In the past, the Association of Counties uh, basically combine the County Commissioners Association and we would just tell you to come to the fall meeting and that included everybody and no disrespect to the other elected officials uh, okay. but I think it's time we have a County Commission specific meeting uh, so that will be available to you uh, March 19th and 20th I'll send out the registration link today uh, one of the benefits of being an association member though is going to be a lower cost to attend that. So you will have a little bit higher cost, but I'll see that it's still reasonable because I want you to be there. Um, and then and then for the for the future benefits for next year when you're budgeting for, for that, hopefully you put it in there. But quite frankly, we need your voices on our policy committees. If you're not a dues paying member, and we really rely on our county commissioners uh, to be the, the policy driver, uh, then you don't sit on the policy committee. And so we could use uh, some some uh, views from yourself on those policy as we go in uh, to the 2025 legislative session. Um, the, the price in and of itself is not that much, as you know, but I understand where you're coming from. Times are tough, and so you got to make, you got to say no to some things. I totally understand that. 
um, I just hope we can provide some value to you that next year you see uh, that it would go into the budget. I would also uh, tell you that as part of that membership, you get $1,500 scholarship if you would want to attend a national uh, association meeting too. So there are, there are benefits to doing it. Uh, it's a low cost, uh, but totally understand it's not in your budget this year. Uh, but I look forward to, to still being active with you uh, uh, regardless. So um, thank you for giving me the time. I wish you the best on, on everything. Uh, clearly, uh, you guys all have my email. Um, anything you need, just let me know and I'll work through it with you. Thank you. Thank so, you, Aaron. Thank you, so Aaron, Aaron, I got a cu you. couple questions, Aaron, if you, would, if you had time. So we're members of Absolutely. the we're, we're members of the overall association. We're, here we're just talking about the county commissioners association. I I still haven't understand the benefits as far as you talk policy. What policy would be what policy would be directed from the top down to a county that, that would be a benefit to us? I don't I don't quite get that. Uh, I, yep. I think a local a local governance is what the county commission is all about it's not from it's not taking guidance from up above I, that it's just the opposite of that of course C correct mr chairman and that is always a little confusing you guys have been great supporters of the association and of course as you know uh, jamie is the president which is a huge deal um the association of counties is the umbrella group that captures all of the elected officials so you have state's attorneys sheriffs uh and, and that's really good. And then we try to blend the policy, but sometimes commissioners as policy uh, holders on, on the fiscal resources may have disagreements with uh, the sheriffs or the state's attorneys. So there is a separate association that the county commissioners association sits and they dictate the policy. That's really where we take our, our policy positions when it comes time for the legislature. So the association of counties will weigh in on on uh, whether or not bail should be higher or lower because the state's attorneys and the sheriffs guide us on that. Uh, but when it comes time to uh, whether uh, taxes should be eliminated or, or more money to local government, there's where we look to the county commissioners because they're the ones who decide uh, what should get spent in the local uh, or not spent in the local. So by, by you not being on the county commissioners association, the County Commissioners Association meets separate during the legislative process, and they take policy positions that may or may not uh, differ from state's attorneys, auditors, treasurers, reporters, those kind of things. So that's the that's the distinction. Uh, but I do know in the in the years past, the County Commissioners Association gets lost a little bit because you don't have your own separate get together. And I'm I'm a hundred percent changing that, uh, and that's why we're doing our March meeting. Okay, thank you. That's all I had. You bet. Thank you for the time, and I and I wish you the best. And uh, let me know if there's any other questions you have. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. See everybody later. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so you would like me to get uh, check back from that association? Yeah. Yeah. You got it. So, so now. How much was it, Sam? 1500, 1600. Uh, 1725. Yes. Yep. So, now's a good time to just have a little talk about this budget and what we are obligated to do as far as financing during the budget season. We contemplated all the money that's supposed to be spent during 2024 last summer. Four of you agreed on what we're going to do. This is not an ongoing process. Once that, do, once that dollar amount is agreed upon, the reason that we put it in a line item and put it in each individual budget is so that when the auditor is presented with a bill, she can go and look, he or she can go look and say, yep, that money is allowable. And switching from line item to line item is not allowable because let's say we take money out of a out of a line item that's not being used um, for a salary. And then all of a sudden, down the road, we hire someone to fill that salary. Now we've depleted that line item, and now at the end of the year, as ended up with the Sheriff's Department, we end up with a $55,000 deficit. So the citizens are the ones that benefit from the budget. We tell them what we're gonna spend. 
although they don't have the way the the wherewithal to tell us no they can certainly get rid of us if they don't like the way we're spending our money and we have to stick with this budget at all costs unless there is an unforeseeable event but things that have been discussed before in the budget negotiations are no longer open to, neg to negotiation it's done it was said and done when we passed the budget when you guys voted on it let's keep that in mind going forward we've got some things to fix here uh, an overspending of this budget means we start out in the hole for the next budget because the money from this these budgets carry forward and the minute we don't carry forward well, in effect, what we did was we levied money outside of the of the process for levying money. We we levied money without we used money without telling the citizens what we're going to use it for or asking their permission or dissent. So the budget system the budget systems in place. The only monies we should talking be talking about are in the event of something that's outside of what we discussed prior. The budget constraints have to be in place the who's ever in charge of the budget the department head has to be conscientious and follow that budget the auditor has to be very conscientious and make sure that no checks are written outside of what was allocated and finally this county commission needs to make sure that that process took place in the final okay of those monies that's what ensures the citizens are getting having some supervision otherwise we would just say okay we vote to levy 1.6 million dollars for the year and that would be it and then you just spend the money as you go that's not the way it works it's complex like this for a reason and to do it outside that is of, of course I don't know if it's against the law it's against the century code and we just got to quit we got to quit doing this we got to quit bringing things up well we need money for this need money for that need money for that make that discuss make that argument at budget time if there's funds to do it and enough people agree enough of us agree on it it'll get done if not it's over that's what I said that's an unexpected saying, expense but 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 an unexpected expense is something that was never contemplated during the budget process. Yeah. Then, and we do have a reserve set aside yeah. for that. But a change of mind on what we sh and on policy is not an unexpected expense. So yes, a tornado comes through and wipes out, or an, or a big winter, or whatever. Yes, then then there is. But something like like this or other things that need to be taken care of shouldn't be considered, because we owe it to the people. To at least let them know. After all, we're taking their money. We're not asking them. We're taking their money, and they have a right to know where that's being spent. <clears throat> so enough of that. We just get off track sometimes. Let's have a look at the bills and the rest of the bills. <clears throat> First of all, have a look at the bill resolution. It got lumped in here. This resolution is just authorized Samantha to pay any incidental bills outside any typical bills that that need to be paid prior to the meeting and they're reoccurring they're not nothing that nothing not, yeah nothing that uh no vacations to hawaii or anything no no okay <laughs> um i usually don't have to use this because you guys do meet um very frequently so that's kind of nice but this is just a just a kind of safeguard me um, if there is something that comes up and we're going to get a, a fee or anything like that, this kind of helps with that. So, so I would need a motion um, allowing for the adoption of the resolution of bills for 2024. I'll make that. Motion by Tranby. Is there is there a second? I'll second. Second by Edland. We'll move on to a roll call vote. Uh, aye in the uh, positive, nay in the negative. Ariel. Aye. Tranby. Aye. Zorn. Aye. Edland. Aye. Wakefield votes aye. Resolution adopted. 
Um, no signature. It's just the it's just the minute meetings that adopt it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now I'll look now on to the bills. <coughs> um, Sam, anything of <coughs> notice, uh, anything of concern in the bills? Nothing that concerns me about the bills. Um, the balance that you guys see is negative. That is because the budget amounts have not been put into the system yet. Um, this will this happens every um, beginning of the year. Um, that is my goal is to get that in this week so by your next meeting you should have those those there so Thank you. A uh, motion by Tranby to present the bills as presented. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Zor. And any further discussion on the bills? Barring no further discussion, we'll move on to a roll call vote. Aye in a positive, nay in a negative. A bro. Aye. Tranby. Aye. Zorn. Aye. Edland. Aye. Wakefield votes aye. Bills approved. Sheriff Beaver, black and blue grant. Back the blue, back the blue grant. Excuse me. Well, he has other things besides the back the blue grant, but it's the sheriff's office and the. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just like to uh, thank each and every one of you for this opportunity. But, uh, I guess first and foremost, I'd like to ask if I could be put onto the meeting minutes for every meeting, just to give general updates on the sheriff's office. Just touch base with you guys since it's a new position. Just keep a transparent line of communication with each and every one of you moving forward. You can, but the but the discussions has to be has to be itemized. So whatever you're going to talk about needs to needs to be part of the agenda. Needs to be listed as the, as the agenda. So to just have your name on there doesn't do much. It, it, it's going to have to each time you're going to have to tell Samantha what the topic of discussion is. No problem. Yeah. But no problem with being on there every time, but you'll just have to make it, you'll just have to take the next step, and here's what I want to talk about. Sure. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, just, I'm going to keep everything pretty brief. Hold on. I just got a few things I'd like to go over with you guys. Um, so, obviously, I appreciate you bringing up what you mentioned about line items and budgets, but that's briefly what I'd like to talk about. But, uh, so I, I inherited this budget um, last year for a lot of uh, you know, different reasons. The sheriff's office had 16 case reports that we dealt with and this year so far we're at nine and we're three weeks into the year so mm -hmm. i mean we're definitely rocking and rolling more there's a lot more activity um, tyler's finishing up the last week in lake region just for some additional training get him up to speed so he should be ready to go starting next week and then he'll finish up this criminal law and traffic block and post board certification in april but in the meantime, he can work like a fully licensed officer. But uh, so my main my main question, I guess, to you guys would be is if we could amend the line item for the chief. I don't foresee any reason that I would be able to hire anyone or promote Tyler to that position. So I'd like to reallocate some of those funding for some other things that I'd like to go over here. So, I guess that that was yes that that can be done. But uh, keep in mind then that if you start wanting to use that line item, you can't go back. You can't. You're right. You'll have to get rid of whatever you yeah, put. Yeah, gotta understand. Absolutely. Put, yeah. No. Very good. No. No. I. I so, go ahead. <laughs> I'm not sure if Bob had mentioned it in the meetings prior, yeah. but uh, there's a company um, called Axon Technologies, that's like the forerunner in the country for body cameras, tasers, 
in-car video. It's a, it's a pretty big expense. But I got it broken down. They gave me a quote on the entire system broken down into just five equal payments. It's, uh, we'd make a payment every year. They're super flexible. Um, so we can pay as little or as much as we'd like. But it's for body cameras for each officer to wear, in-car video systems in their cars, as well as that taser. And it's just, right now, the Sheriff's Office currently has just in-car videos. The body cameras at the Sheriff's Office, they're all out of order, every single one of them. Every taser the Sheriff's Office has is out of order. And this is just a huge officer safety as well as community safety and just trust building technology within the community. And just to throw out some numbers here for you, it'd be, like I said, just that equal payment that they gave to me is 16580 for the first year, and it'd be that much for the next four years for the whole five year term with Axon. Like I said, we could, they're flexible, we can make a smaller amount of payment, we can make a larger amount of payment, and it would just be adjusted for the next four years. That would include the software and the devices, and then at the end of two years, we'd get a device upgrade, and then at the end of the five years, we'd get another device upgrade. So we'd have the latest brand new technology every two years and every five years. So that is my, I guess that's my first request is if I could go ahead and so right now none of their body cameras work, you said? There's not a single body camera that yeah. works. And that's, it's watch guard technologies, which got bought out by Motorola a couple years ago. And there is no continued service there. And Motorola is basically killing them off to promote their own brand. And every agency that I know of is switching over to Axon. How, how often do you use the body cameras? Like yeah. Every contact, every day. Every day. Okay. Every okay. contact, they should be on. So this is getting pretty complicated. This can't be done verbally. No, well, just we we need we need to have we need to table this. We need to have you bring a written breakdown of what you want to do with the dollars amount. What what budget items would be affected yep. to the next meeting, and that's really the only yes. way to do this. Keep keep in mind one thing that will probably not work with what you're trying to do. We only have the ability here to budget for one year. We can't enter into a five-year contract. We have no idea next year what the <coughs> county commission would, would agree to. So we can't, we can't enter into a five-year contract. Um, that's always been that's always been a problem on, on and, and that's, it's a good it's a good deal for most things so that we don't get indebted. But that will be something you'll have to you'll have to take into account. But if if you would put everything that you think that that should be done into uh, some format where we can have it beforehand and refer to it, okay. it it's it's real hard to try to keep everything yeah. everything in place. And and besides that, the public needs to be able to have a be able to look at it also. Um, I noticed there was a there was a request or a reference to the police contract with the city that that will take some time if that's going to happen because of course the sheriff can't enter into the policing contract this county has to the sheriff has to be on board we can't obligate the sheriff to to be in a policing contract so it's really a it's really kind of a, a tough deal to do especially when we don't have any confirmation of how long the sheriff's going to be in place. We have an election coming up in a few months. The, the city declined or never came and met with us to iron out to iron out a contract. Um, so that would be another thing that I think we would have to put off until at least the budget, at least the budget season and get a contract that would that was looked at and put in place because that's not something we can just the contract that, that Bob brought to us didn't come anywhere near covering the costs to the county for the added services and of course that is a disadvantage to the everyday citizen in Griggs County because policing services are offered to every citizen in Griggs County when they're offered then to additional services to the city of Cooperstown then you have 
<laughs> you, you have some citizens being, being given more services than others. And so the only way to make that work out correctly is to define what that cost is going to be and have the city pay that cost. <coughs> so that will be a, that would be a long-term deal to try to get straightened out. And, and I, I don't think there's any use doing that until, we're, until we have an, a duly elected sheriff. Because a new sheriff could say, no, I don't want to do it. And we wouldn't have the ability to say, no, yes, you have to. I think you're, you're, you're in a line of thought, same thing with the SRR, SRR thing too for the school research officer, same type of thing. Same thing. It, it's, yeah. you know, because it's not defined in the duties of the sheriff, we can't assume that the sheriff's going to... That was the next thing I was going to bring up. Yeah. Um, I talked with Derek at the school, and uh -huh. he's still very interested in pursuing that going into the next school year. So I, I'd like to uh, post that job opening. Sooner rather than later, just in the event that we have to train somebody in. I mean, it's going to take you know, maybe four months to train in somebody. So that way they're ready going into that school year. Right. I think it'd be nothing but a good asset for the school. So. It, it would, but same thing. We have to have a contract with them so that the costs of that person are totally that of the school. No, we never, we never did actually get any from them. And it isn't like we didn't try. We, <laughs> we tried over and over and over again for a yeah. period of about five months. Mm -hmm. But we'll into that, see if I can get yeah, there. but so so. I the only benefit I see to the city. And to the school. Is possibly some sharing of services, but I don't even see that. If I think if they want a, a deputy, either one of them, they should go out and hire their own. But they, but they unfortunately they can't they can't justify it yeah. themselves you know there's no way you can they can full float that you know okay Without somebody's help you, you follow what i'm saying i do but let's do that let's take that yeah. let's take that that line of thought then yeah. so right now we hire the county hires us the services that we need correct mm -hmm. and that's all we should we should we shouldn't have excess services if we have excess services we should cut them back if we don't have excess services if we provide for the school or we provide for the city, where do those excess services come from? Either they, either we had excess services and we shouldn't, or we take away from the services offered to the county in order to offer services to the city and to the school. So no matter how you look at it, that position needs to be fully funded by whatever entity wants that position. Because to do otherwise, this the county residents are, are giving up some of the protection that they might that they that they've paid for or they were being charged for more protection than they needed that's and, and that's the long and short of it so I I would think if I was I would think that a shared officer between the city and the school would be a benefit in my mind, but that's that's up to them. But we don't have excess services, so we, we have to figure out if we hire a person, how much is that person going to cost, and then they're dedicated to that that service that we, that we have. We we would we being in the sheriff or the and the state's attorney is also involved in this, and would have to lend their expertise on the operation, and that would be the county's contribution, I would believe, if that makes sense. But from a financial standpoint, we need to we need to dedicate the dollars that it's going to take and set them off to the side. They should not be part of. They should not be intertwined with the county budget because we're already offering those services to every citizen of Briggs County. So it gets it gets a lot more technical than than at first glance. But it's it's still workable. It's just everybody needs to get and sit down in one room. The the city, the school. The law enforcement, the state's attorney, and, and 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 ask the questions and get it all straightened out, and then the contracts have to be written. It's a long process, put it that way. So, if you'd present us with uh, with what you want to do, so you you want to eliminate the third deputy, is that correct? The chief deputy. Yeah. Well, what is that? But I mean, is that the whole the whole cost of the chief deputy then, which is? Fifty-seven thousand two hundred. Uh, well, 
Uh, to reallocate just the funding for Axon and then for hopefully a purchase of a new vehicle here in the near future. That would leave approximately 38,000 left over within that line item. Well, that's the axiom. The, 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 the new vehicle is dependent on, well, we can talk about that later, but the new vehicle was depend. part of that money was going to be involved in the school project, but it never got to the point where, where we got a contract put in place. And of course, the dollar figure they proposed and the terms they proposed were just using us on an as needed basis as if we had a deputy or a on just sitting around waiting to do something that ha that all needs to be ironed out that's why i wanted to uh bring some of the stuff up in here in the meeting because I've, I've heard some different things so that's why i was just hoping to uh, well we're just the truth right the horse. It, well it is it is what it is you know it, it's we we offer the citizens are offered services to the sheriff's department and it, that's the well defined and anything above that needs to be defined also and I don't, and, and I can't define it all. I mean, Jamie will have to do. Uh, there's, there's the legalities involved, and there's a bunch of things involved with this. Number one being, what do we do if we enter into a contract, and we have a change of staffing at, at the sheriff's department, and a new sheriff doesn't want to do it? What are our obligations? How do we get, how do we back out of that contract? How do we back out if we've spent money in order to satisfy that contract? How do we recoup that those dollars? I, I just don't. I just don't see how it, how the whole thing works correctly. But that's someone can point that out if they want. But th anyway, we need a we need a presentation put in writing and, and so that we can actually look at it. Yeah. The people can look at it and, and it can be a, it can be appraised. The black and blue. What what's up with that? We can. Uh, is that just? You guys wanted to put into terms of how you wanted to use that um, for a future. Um, this what? many years, you get this. This for many. recruitment, right? Yeah. Well, how much? How many? How much are we left in the eleven thousand? Right? Well, we got. Well, then we get a total of eleven, and we spent so much of it. Right. So. so so reading that grant, we allocate the money. Yeah. The sheriff's department disperses it. So we we would need. <laughs> uh, sheriff Beaver, we would need some kind of guidelines on how you think that money should be spent. Because you disperse it, we, yeah. we allocate it, but the allocation is dependent on how you're going to disperse it. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't put that yeah. And, and so for recruitment and retention, that can be part of it. What is the possibility of hiring somebody I mean is there anybody is there anybody or is the system still so understaffed statewide that there's not anybody available there, uh, well currently there's uh, the academy class that I was taking part in just briefly uh, typically that class would see 20 to 30 students and there's three currently in class so it is and what's the, and the, the demand out there far outweighs that yeah. That's how the uh, academy in Bismarck is as well. Is their numbers are hurting big time. And then, the, the and, looking, so. and then, and then the Ohio Patrol took a chunk of them by by lowering their requirements. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. So not rosy then is the. Yeah, that's that's why I'd like to definitely get, not this year, anyways. Like that's I said, that's why I'd like to get on top of this with the school resource officer and just try and find an applicant so they can be ready to go. Um, yeah, with, with, uh, without the infrastructure in place that how we're going to yeah, pay we, for it and how it's going to be. Right yeah, we, we, need to we need to sit down with the school board and we need to sit down with the city. And, and I, I know Bob had touched on it a little bit. Um, it was a couple of meetings I attended in December, but I got a quote for two different vehicles. Just just wanted to throw that out there just so you guys know. Um, According to Sam, we have 35500 in the general fund to go towards a new vehicle. I have a quote for a 20, 2023 Dodge Charger, all-wheel drive. That's at the dealership here in Cooperstown. Dodge discontinued that vehicle moving forward, so that's the last of its kind. And it's 46600 is the quote on that vehicle. After that, the only other option would be a 
2024 police package Chevy Tahoe or Dodge Durango, and I got a quote for that as well. Just uh, just to let you guys know, and that's approximately fifty nine thousand starting for those vehicles. So, if it's possible, I'd like to like to uh, try and get that Dodge Charger purchased, just so we have something to replace that old pickup. I talked with Wayne and he is more than willing to take that vehicle so the road crew can utilize it and upgrade. I believe they have like a 1980 something pickup he said they're currently using. So, um, um, yeah. so it'd be a significant upgrade for them. They could definitely utilize it. Is the pickup, is it, is it how much money reported to the pickup, the 2012 pickup? That's uh, a lot. Right. But don't, don't, know, don't, don't we know have two vehicles, two newer vehicles? We do have two new vehicles, yeah. correct, yeah. But, well, yeah. I mean, we have two newer, newer vehicles, we're not going to hire another deputy, so we're, we're, what's the deal here? That's no. where, <laughs> again, with the ties in the school resource officer, plus we have quite a few part-timers that come over and work. So that way myself would have, have a vehicle, Tyler would have a vehicle, and then we'd have a third vehicle for back up if something happened and one of those vehicles went down or for the part-timers either way. Right now the the Dodge is it's where is it drivable right now? The Dodge pickup? Yeah, pickup's drivable. Okay. So it's not the most feasible uh, patrol vehicle for our needs. There's a few different reasons, but I'll just keep it brief. It's just it's not the most efficient vehicle for us. Anything else? Uh, just lastly, uh, I just want to mention it. And I'm sure I'd like to sit down and talk with Jamie at some point, just offline. But I'd like you guys just to. Uh, Keep considering and keep thinking about some way that we can compensate Annie for all of her help as the office deputy. There's a lot of services that go into being an office deputy that the sheriff's office just frankly isn't providing that would provide some revenue into the office. And uh, I'm not about to ask anything extra from Annie when she's already doing so much. Uh, she's doing the job with a second person essentially for free. So just want to throw that out there and then. That concludes uh, just a few things that I wanted to touch base with. So. Thank you. I've got a quick question. Is, is she a full time employee? Okay. That answers my question. <coughs> okay. Tyler Technologies. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Sheriff sure, Weaver. Okay. I have. Um Ron and Carrie on the Zoom here to do, you guys at the last meeting um, wanted wanted to uh, have Tyler Technologies and CPT do a um, demo. CPT was unable to do it on this meeting. They will be here at your next meeting, but we do have Tyler ready to do their presentation for you. Um, so I will let them do their thing. Should be able to share. All right. Oh, Thanks, good. Samantha. I appreciate that. Um, uh, my name is Ron Faraci, and with me I've got Carrie Hughes and Don Carlson. Um, what we had planned today was to do a very brief overview of Tyler Technologies and then give you a, just a sample of a demonstration of our TaxWise product and of our SE Pro financial and payroll product. So um, hopefully, you know, you have a, you'll have a chance to get an idea of what, the, what our our uh, presentation in, encompasses. There were, I mean, uh, Govern Software that had announced uh, last year that they were no longer going to be servicing uh, their, which is your existing provider. Uh, they're no longer going to be servicing you as of December 31st, 2025. Uh, they had 15 clients. Uh, out of those 15 clients, we currently have 13 agreements with, uh, with to replace uh, Dakota Software or Govern Soft. So. Uh, I've got, uh, Carrie has put together a, a brief slide presentation. I'm going to kick it off to her. Our plan is to then let Don do a very brief tax-wise demonstration, and then, uh, and then we'll turn it over to uh, 
the Griggs County Commission for any questions you might have about our proposal. Does that sound okay? Yeah, yeah go ahead. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and, and for um, everything you guys do. We know that this is uh, getting on your schedule is, is an honor, so we appreciate that. <laughs> Again, um, Ron mentioned who we are, so I'm Carrie. I think I'm the rookie on the team, and, and this month I ce celebrate 21 years with Tyler. So uh, we all have been with Tyler for quite a number of years. Um, I work with the financial personnel side of the software, um, and Ron is my counterpart on TaxWise, and we have Don, who will be showing you the software here momentarily. Um, just a high level of who we are, um, Tyler is the top software vendor in the United States for public sector. So we have a, a lot of uh, clients and this is our focus. And we are um, a company that has the best solutions not only today, but by 10, 20 years from now, um, we could be a viable partner and solution for you. I wanted to also just share with you um, you guys are actually already a partner of ours with our DocuPro software, so thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate being partners with that. Um, but we also have a lot of companies in the state, I think everyone except for one, that uses one or more of our Tyler uh, solutions. And the ones in yellow are the ones that uh, Ron mentioned. There's been a couple companies uh, that have either gone out of business or or um, their futures up in, up in the air. So we've had quite a few counties sign on to Tyler in 2023. Um, and so we wanna get you guys in this queue as soon as possible because there's a lot of projects uh, underway and we wanna make sure we hit that um, 2025 end of life deadline with Carrie, your current software. Carrie, are you trying to share, some, share your screen right yeah. now? Your, your screen is coming through, Carrie. Okay, you're not seeing it. I apologize. Oh, uh, let me try that again. Okay. How about now? Yes. Okay. Yep. Hey, there we go. There's the map I was talking about. So. Thank you so much already for your partnership with our Document Pro software. Uh, again, this is just a representation of all of the counties that are using the various solutions in our state. I think most, even the ones in yellow, have both DocuPro and TaxWise, um, and as well as school ERP. So we are really excited to be um, sharing with you these solutions. It's really great to have the same solutions as your neighbors, as your colleagues throughout the state. We have a great user group that gets together, shares resources. Um, okay. Um, really what we're so excited about is having integrated solutions for all of your needs. And that's really we, what we are excited to highlight and share with you today. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand things over to Don, and he's going to take you on a really brief, high-level overview of the TaxWise solution. Don, I'm going to see okay. if I can. Okay. Thanks, Carrie. Let's see if I can get my screen. Let me know when you when you can see that. Still looking at carries. There we go. Hey, there it is. How about that? Very good. Okay. Um, so my name is Don Carlson. I'm one of the developers here at Tyler. Been working with, um, oh gosh, a long time, 23 years, I guess now, and I've been in property tax specifically for about 35 years. Um, we've been working. Uh, with North Dakota since uh, about 2008 um, and as Carrie mentioned we're across the state um, we have 
all of the largest counties in North Dakota, except for one, and um, all the way down to uh, Slope County over there, um, and our software is able to um, take care of the needs of, of all of those clients, regardless of their size. So um, one of the, the nice parts about being associated with that group, though, is as those other counties um, request features, um, all, everybody gets the benefit from that. So uh, one of the things I always like to highlight is, is that we do quarterly builds. Um, every quarter, we, we you're going to be updated with the newest software, and every two weeks we do patches. So it is it's always changing, it's always evolving. Um, it's definitely not static, and in, in, a, in our world, when the legislatures get together, um, it's pretty common for there to be quite a few changes. So, um, and over the last couple of years, that has that has definitely been the case. So, um, so what we what you have here in front of you is our uh, TaxWise main menu. As you come in, um, it, it's all driven by your operator ID. When you sign in, um, you get to see the programs that the administrator has set up that you'll use. So I'm, I'm in as an administrator, and um, so we're, we're able to look at, at everything that's out there. There are a lot of programs. The depth of the product is, is quite unique, actually. Um, so where this fits in the in the puzzle is uh, we accept um, appraisal and assessment information usually from Vanguard, um, which sits in front of TaxWise. So we are able to get ownership information, valuation, that sort of stuff from a mass appraisal system like Vanguard. Um, what where TaxWise sits is, is this takes care of all of your tax bills. So. Um, creating the tax bills, printing tax bills, uh, receiving all of those tax bills, um, and then breaking that information down into receivables and sending that information on to your GL package, in this case the, the SE Pro um, uh, package that, that Carrie mentioned. And it does all of that um, in an electronic form, so you don't have to uh, you know, we're not we're not manually doing dual entry anywhere. We're electronically receiving the information from um, an external package like Vanguard, and then we are updating the the GL product um, electronically as well. So, when you come into TaxWise, as I mentioned, if you have access to um, one of these very you know these applications, uh, you see it on the screen. You can see over here on the left, there's various areas that um, if you're an administrator, you'll see this, you know, we've got cash receiving, um, uh, SID module, tax assessment, tax billing. Uh, some of these other ones are uh, a little more uh, state specific. So today, um, given the, the, the brief nature of this, I, I decided that what we would try to take a look at is is what I usually refer to as the hub of, of the tax product, and, and that's what that's our parcel master here. Um, this, you know, regardless of your job in in tax wise or in, in the treasurer's office or the auditor's office, this is going to be the place where you spend most of your time. This is this would be the the landing spot for all of that ownership information and valuation, legal, all of that from um, your Vanguard system. Um, it would, it's also the place where if you are searching for parcels or a, a taxpayer has come into your office and, and wants information about their, their parcel, about what they, they own, um, this, is the, this is the place where um, the, all of the, the clerks would, would use to get that information back out to uh, the taxpayers. So, um, we can, of course, on the on the database side, we can store as much information as possible. But you need to be able to to access that information. You need to be able to search for information. Um, what I've done here is is I've done a very quick search for 2023 active real estate. Um, 
information that we're looking at is from our friends over at Walsh County today. Um, so you can get all kinds of uh, information immediately at your fingertips. We know that there's 15,000 parcels out there. Um, if we wanted to narrow that search down quite a bit, if, if uh, somebody came in and, and um, let's see if there's any, any Carlsons out there, there normally is. Um, we can get information. The more the more we put into a, a search, the, the more we can narrow it down. Um, so even you know for for people who maybe know their parcel number, you can put that in here. Um, of course, everybody knows their name, so you can put that in here. What uh, what Taxways will do is since we have the ability to have multiple names on a on a piece of property, you can search all the way to through additional owners um, regardless of how that ownership has been put in turn that on yeah. um, all right um, so what, what we'll do is I want to just take you through some of the information that, that we store in here to give you an idea of, of, of the capabilities of TaxWise. So if you have any questions at any, any point, just stop me and, and we can talk about uh, various things that are going on. Um, if you are interested in, say, give me all of the parcels in a certain master levy district, maybe it's you know everything in the city of Cooperstown, we can get that information out here. We already talked about name. We have the ability within uh, TaxWise to attach multiple parcel numbers. So if you have uh, a taxpayer that owns 10 pieces of property, um, we, can, we can assign a single parcel number to all those 10 and we can provide that taxpayer with, with one tax bill with details of, of each piece of property. From the standpoint of the county, that, can, that really aids in your collection efforts because Instead of typing in 10 different parcel numbers, you can just type in the one multiple parcel number and bring up all of that information, all of those tax bills for that, and pay them all with a single click. Um, we can put in escrow information into our bank code field, and then we have the ability to attach owner IDs to all of them. And so there again, for larger landowners, um, we could put in a single owner ID in the, that way we can attach that owner ID to a parcel rather than going in and typing in individual names and addresses for each one of them. So, um, go through a couple of these other ones. Um, if you're interested in trying to find the parcel number or the ownership, um, we can search by not only an owner address, but we can also search by situs address. Um, we can search by uh, township section and range. Uh, subdivision lot, uh, if we have the mobile homes in there, if we know the, the park that it's sitting in, the space it's sitting in, and maybe even title number, we can put that in there. And then in the background, while we're doing all this stuff for uh, maintaining uh, information within TaxWise, TaxWise has a full audit trail behind the scenes that it is, it is tracking all of the changes that have been made uh, within the system so that we can say, give me all of the, the value changes maybe that occurred yesterday. Um, today we're out of balance, yesterday we're in balance, and so um, go, go show me what happened. I, I always refer to it as my, the big brother feature out there. So it is, it's always watching all of the changes and from an audit trail standpoint, um, pretty nice, pretty easy to figure out what happened so all right um, as, as once we've found a parcel that that we're interested in um, we can get all we can walk down all of these tabs to find all of the information that we have about it um, before I do that I want to point out that um, taxways never loses any information so we we continue to store historical information for as many years back as as you guys have um, as we go into the future, uh, there will always, we, we never, we're never going to drop off any of the historical information, um, and it will always be available. So, 
for instance, right at the moment, we've just went live with Walsh County, and they've got data all the way back to 1999 in their system. So, um, all right. So um, we'll take a, a look at some of these tabs real quick. Um, so we mentioned the, the maintenance log entries and that Big Brother feature. These are, are what it's tracking back there. Um, within TaxWise, we, we take care of all of the veterans' credits and the homestead credits. Those are calculated automatically. Um, you have the ability to lock assessment information. There's a whole system behind the scenes that once a tax bill is created, you can lock the information that created that tax bill. So very powerful, allows, uh, stops users from accidentally making changes that they didn't want to be there. To look at the ownership, as I mentioned before, we have uh, multiple owners. You can go, um, you know, here again, not only uh, for each year, uh, we can go back and see ownership on, on, a, on a parcel for as far back as we have. And then within here, um, all the way down, you can put in as many owners as you, as you want on a, on a product. The only thing that is, re that is required is that we ask that one of them has to be marked as the mail to. Where does the tax bill go? Um, TaxWise has the ability to send out multiple copies of the bill for those parcels that have that you have people that that um, want an additional copy of it, and you can put in everything from contract buyers to contact names. Maybe somebody is is taking care of you know one of their elderly parents, um, and the tax bill is going. A different direction. Uh, we mentioned the veterans credit and the homestead credit. Here's where you put in disability um, and income requirements. The legal description, once again, an unlimited um, legal description. This is where we're tying value to a levy district, to that master levy district. Um, and if we were searching for that township range and section, this would be where we would be putting that information in. This will all come out of your current system and be automatically populated into tax funds. For our mobile home module, this is where we would store that. We have a full mobile home depreciation module that will automatically calculate the mobile home depreciation and value each year, uh, making that very easy for you. Our value screen, um, once again, um, unlimited number of class codes or assessment codes can be put onto a parcel. And we, as, as I mentioned, we never deprecate, we never lose any of that. So we can go back for as far as, as we have that information. This one, this particular parcel goes back to 2014. We can see um, what the value on, on that farmland has has done. So and this is a web-based product, so it's all web-based? It is, it's not. We do have a, a web presence where we feed information from your live databases out to, we refer to it as ITAX, so that um, the, the good news is, is that the web doesn't actually have access to your, your live production databases. Um, uh, it is uh, basically one day behind. So all of your today's information will be extracted and update the web uh, this evening. And then tomorrow, everything will be available uh, to, the, to the public. Um, but yeah, it, it's, uh, it, this is actually, it, is, it, it would be installed on uh, a server at uh, Briggs County. We do offer um, a uh, hosted presence where uh, Tyler Technologies and Amazon Web Services have an agreement. Um, so if you wanted a cloud-based uh, hosted, we can provide that as well. But it's, it, that, that, I don't want you to confuse that over with a, a web-based um, product. So, Don, could you show ITAX? Uh, just since uh, Madison has a lot of interest in that, and I'm sorry to do this to you, but just real quick and i think grand forks county is always a good one to show so this this is what don's going to do is go into a website and show you uh, what a citizen would see or a taxpayer would see 
uh, for example, if I was in Grand Forks County, uh, you know, this this is what I might look at when I come into and, and I want to pay tax bills or just look at my tax information. I'll turn it back over to you, Don. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. Um, so I'll do a, a quick search here. Um, so a lot, a lot of customization available to you as to as far as as what they see. You know, what what information you put up here. Obviously, yours wouldn't say that. Um, it, it, you get to decide what fields uh, you want them to be able to search on. Um, in this case, I, I put in a search just for Carlson. Um, we'll do, uh, let's see, we'll go look at that one for no particular reason. Um, like I say, so this would have been for Grand Forks, this is their live ITAC site. Um, and so we're, they, the person coming in, they can get a tremendous amount of information. Um, for instance, we'll, we'll, if, if they're interested in, in the valuation on their product, or on their, on their parcel, um, they can go in and easily see that land and structure here, here's those, back up to, um, this is one that I like, they can get a breakdown of, this is their tax bill, how much was paid as a dollar amount and as a percentage for each piece of their, of the puzzle, so to speak. And then those can get broke down even further. So, um, so this would be uh, the city of Grand Forks. So if we were to take the city piece here and we break that down into Here's each piece of that. Here's the county piece. So looking at it from, you know, the high level down to here's what each of the county levies as a dollar and the percentage of their bill. So a tremendous amount of, of detail. Um, let's see, we can even, if they're um, you know, if they want a, a copy of their tax bill, that is available to them online. Uh, that saves the county a, a great deal of, of time and, and uh, effort in, in getting that information out to the counties or out to the taxpayers. We also have the ability to put a, a uh, pie chart on that tax bill as well, which is something the uh, I believe the, the state legislators are talking about or have asked for. So, yeah. And um, they can, if this is an optional module, but if you do have ITAX, you can um, um, have a module that where uh, taxpayers can pay their taxes online. So uh, both of those, like I say, are, are options. So. Yeah. And I believe right now you use point and pay. Is that correct, Madison? Yes. And they are a qualified credit card vendor for TaxWise, just so you know. Going back to what I was saying before about all of the, um, we, we never lose any information. So if, if this taxpayer was interested in what has their tax bill done over the years, we can we send historical information out to ITAX as well. We can say it went from 22 to 29, um, and not only the bill amount, the the date that it was paid, and how much was paid. So, so a lot of information um, out to to ITAX, and and so it it also can be posted on Amazon Web Services as well. Um, like say Tyler, the provider for AWS. So. Right. And we, we are experiencing converting the Dakota systems or, or govern soft software. So we, you know, when Don was talking about populating the fields within TaxWise, uh, we, we've worked uh, hand in hand with uh, Kelly and with Bob at uh, GovernSoft to, uh, to make sure that, that information comes over cleanly. You know, um, I'm back on to tax and I'll do a real, real quick here. Um, one of the things that that's become a real big thing in tax wise is 
is the ability to attach and store um, information or uh, communications with taxpayers, with your constituents. Um, we can we can have copies of those exact documents that are attached to the parcel forever. Um, so you don't have to worry about going and reprinting anything. Um, as it was created, it is automatically attached here. For instance, this one, this is the, this parcel, we sent um, this taxpayer, this estimated tax bill in June. We have an exact copy of it here. If they wanted another copy of it, we could easily print another copy right out of TaxWise here. We can email it right out of TaxWise. Um, then, you know, we sent an, the, the actual tax bill to them. Ron mentioned this one, um, you know, in the, in the, in a way, um, you know, but if, if the legislature were to act and put uh, requirements on for a pie chart that is ready to go. Um, and all the way down to, you know, when they come in oops, and, and pay the tax bill, we attach the receipts as well. And then those are, are held in, in your history uh, forever. So if they needed another, they needed a copy of that uh, receipt, it is available. We don't have to go recreate it. It's, this is the actual receipt that did it. So um, I think I'm way beyond any of my time. Uh, that, that's, um, do you have any questions for Don at this point? Uh, we want to be respectful of your time, uh, John and team. So uh, do you have any questions for him? Otherwise, I'll turn it back over to Carrie uh, so she can discuss uh, some of the financial and payroll personnel issues. So what we were looking for was a basic price breakdown on what this is going to cost us. We're, this has to be discussed for the 2025 budget. The technical portion of it can be left to other than us. We're, we're not, we're, the county commission doesn't operate the system. We authorize and pay for the system. So all this is good and fine, but it really isn't what we were looking for. We want a cost comparison between your product and the other products that we're going to be looking at for budget pro for budget purposes. This can be, this this whole spiel can be done at a later time when we just when we get to a point. But 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 price is the most significant issue in a small county like this, and added added value to the system, of course, has to be looked at. But um, maybe you were misled on what was supposed to be done here. But we were just looking for price comparisons. And okay. we are we are on a real tight schedule here. It's t okay. Ten forty five was uh, was the end of this, and and it, yeah, we got that's, that's where we're at. We got you know the technical part of it is between you and the and the people that are running the program. We the county commission doesn't deal okay. with that. We deal with the with the costs of the of the project overall. Okay. So I do have a question on the project overall. This is Stephanie. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is how long from the start to finish when you start converting over how long does that take we've been quoting about anywhere it's going to run anywhere from 9 to, to 12 13 months somewhere in there stephanie uh we like to you know the way we like to handle it is we measure twice cut once and so we we want to make sure we don't miss anything uh we also have a quite a few uh uh, people or uh, counties coming on board. So, you know, the sooner we can get started, the better off we're going to be. But typically, you're in the typical nine to 12 month uh, time frame from Porter to uh, to go live on one of the products. Okay, so our current software that we have right now, when is the end date as to when it's going to be available, Sam? December 31st, 2025. Okay, so we would need to start very soon. You know, right. Okay. Thank you. Yep. No. Uh, and we certainly, you know, if, if can I share my screen or am I? I'm trying to share my. I think Don, maybe you have to stop sharing yours. Okay. And then it might switch over. I have um, some pricing information up. Let me know if it loads for you guys. Okay. Is that loading? Can you see that, Ron? Yes. Okay. Um, so I kind of 
wanted to skip to this part since that's what you asked for. Um, basically, our uh, proposal, if it were signed today, we have some one-time license fees um, of around 61000 Those are bro broken up traditionally over three payments. So 25% um, uh, down payment, 15% uh, after a year. And then the biggest amount, 60%, we um, typically bill when the software is made available, but that's something that we'd be, we've kind of talked to you guys in the past about, you know, this is the proposal that we put together last summer, um, maybe pushing that out for you guys a little bit because um, of budget constraints. The one-time services are billed as used, as scheduled. Um, most of those would happen in 2025, just based on where we think your project will fall. Um, and then, then there's an annual ongoing fee of around $20,000. We also spoke briefly last week with Travis about some additional servers. He's worked with some other counties as well um, on this project, so had a pretty good idea of where you stand on that, but just want to make sure that's part of the discussion. Question on that. If we decide to go this route, how much would you need in 2024 to start it in 2025? Right. Um, I'm gonna go forward to that other slide I've worked on. Uh, back back in August. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Gary. Um, so kind of well, this is kind of like what we're kind of thinking is we have that like I think it was like a 15% down payment, plus some initial like one-time services for some planning and software installation that would happen in 2024. Most of those one-time costs um, would be in 2025. With that 60%, that 37,000, we're thinking we could either, um, you know, typically we would build that this year, um, but we will have some flexibility hopefully to, when we looked at this last year to maybe uh, Bill that towards the end of the year in, in hopes that you can pay it in early 2025. Is that what we were thinking, Ron? <clears throat> yeah, that, that's exactly what we were thinking. So uh, the minimum, the, the down payment would be somewhere around $15,000 in 2024. And then we would uh, look at ways to make sure that that $37,000 uh, could come out of your 25 fiscal budget. And then, uh, and then, as the, the project would need to be completed in 2025, so that's when the, the $100,000 would be due. And then so, that, that you'd be have an ongoing cost of around 20000 For us, there's kind of two things to kind of get you guys in the queue. Um, so we want to get these two things done as quickly as possible. One is to get an agreement in place, and two is to um, have the servers in place. Once we kind of have those two things established, then you guys are in the queue on the schedule and we feel comfortable that we'll be able to get you live by the end of 2025. If we wait too long, then that um, that, that uh, deadline is at risk. We discussed with Travis uh, putting in, it, it's a standard Microsoft server, one that Travis is very familiar with. Uh, not every, but not all options you're gonna look at operates on a standard Microsoft server. Some of those, so some of those other options, and I believe the other option you're looking at operates on a proprietary IBM uh, mainframe, and so uh, I believe it's called an I series or an I box. So just keep that in mind that that's uh, th there's a distinction there on the platform we operate on and the platform uh, our competitor operates on. So, in summary here, from the county's point of view, we can't make a decision until we've settled on a budget for 2025, which will take place October, is when that's finalized. So, what's discussed during the budget negotiations will be the path that we're going to go with whatever product we, de we decide to go with. So, our hands are basically tied. This has to take place in any money transfer has to take place in 2025. And I assume that you can make that fit your schedule if we if we deem to go that route. But that that's where we we sit. This wasn't this wasn't budgeted for 2024, um, but of course it will be looked at in 2025, given the end date of the software, 
we'll have a decision in, in October that's well within the 12 months to the end of 2025. So I think it'll all work. It's just we're now we're gathering information to see which direction we're going to go. And uh, the number one issue, of course, is initial cost and ongoing cost. So that's kind of where we're at. And, and to try to make a decision before that, before we have the authorization to spend the money, is kind of a moot point. Right. Um you know, Carrie and I can discuss flexibility with management. Obviously, when we deviate from standard policy, that's something we have to do, just like your office holders would do with you. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I I'm not, uh, I, I don't have any problem with uh, presenting a, a, uh, a scenario like that, and and see if we can get that approved. Yeah. Um, if we, if you could come up, if you came up with a decision and could issue some type of assurance that, you know based on when the funds come available, you'd like to place an order, that would help a great deal. So that we, we can't make a decision until the money has been authorized by a vote of the commission in, during the budget okay. session. That's how the process works. To okay. commit to, I, I to do, commit I, to I, something before the before it's been budgeted, of course, is is outside the whole process. We can't we can't make a decision to spend money until we've made the decision to spend money in the official process. I was asking for a letter, that's all. Yeah. We, we, with, with all the disqualifiers you just mentioned. Yeah. What question, was it 187,000? I think you guys figured it out. Yeah, to get, to get it down to the bare minimum. 185,735. And come the budget negotiations, we'll have all no, these I figures in front of us, and we'll decide what we're going to do. Was that two hundred and something thousand? Yeah, they knocked it down. down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I believe the concern that Clay brought up from the board programs was Greg's time would have to cover additional costs potentially for the management of the board programs in 20, 2025. I'm not sure what where that sits on that, I guess, but to be aware of it. So all the clients are on board for 2024, um, but a lot of them are getting converted to Tyler within that year, so then it would be 2025 that we would then have to take over those costs of the Dakota Programs budget for the counties that aren't on for 2025. How much do we spend? So Tyler wants to end December 2024. Dakota. Not Tyler, I'll take that. Dakota, I'm sorry. 2020, 2025 is 12-31-2025 is the last day Kelly Hornstein is going to be supporting you. That's right. And there was another information that he just sent off that um, going forward from now until then, if there's any legislative changes, Dakota programs is not going to make those. They are not going to touch their system. They are going to go on with it from now until then. Um, because they're not going to update the system or make any changes from now on. Most allegedly, <clears throat> unless there's an emergency. <laughs> they're not in session. session. They're, yeah. they're not in session until 2025, yeah. and most legislative changes wouldn't go into effect until August of 2025. So there's no other changes being made. Like, that was just like an instant. Yeah. Like, yeah. we can't get them to change anything. They're not, they're not switching their system. They're making it the exact same. And, we can't install urgency into this process. Okay. We have a budget process. We have to put everything out on the table and see what our options are and make a decision. Any discussions prior to that are meaningless. Mm -hmm. So what we need is, what is our best, what's the best price we're gonna get on this from all the different companies that are providing service, where we're gonna provide services. We'll make a decision during the budget session and we'll move forward and the time frame fits that. <coughs> How much does Dakota cost us every year so much? 20000 20000 uh, Dakota For this one. No, 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 for Dakota. Mm. Dakota programs is 15 something. Okay. From what he was talking, it's, it could go up potentially quite a bit. Yeah. Okay. I assume you'll send out the prices, or is there going to be a price, or is that negotiable as time moves forward? 
the uh, the pricing that we had submitted to uh, Madison was uh, I mean it's it's the quote has expired at this point. I can okay. Carrie and I can put another quote together. Is that what you have an updated one? Well, we'll start the budget negotiations in in May. So we'll start looking at this, and and it won't be completed until October. But it would the, the sooner that you can have a fixed price, the you're done with it then, and then we'll we'll move on from there. Okay. Fixed price and the service is offered, of course. Absolutely. Thank you. Did did we answer your budget questions so we got to the, what you wanted to talk about today? Yes, we got yeah. an idea. As long as we got a final number, what we can go off when we when we do our budget, that's the main thing. Like you said, budget okay. and the services, so we have something to go off of. Okay. Very Terry good. and I will work on that and uh, see what we come up with. Thank you. Thank right. you. Have Thank a good you. day. Yeah. Okay. So, we'll move on from that. Breckheimer and Jacobson court case, Jamie. I, I presume this is just a paperwork shuffle. Yeah, so this is um, kind of a paperwork shuffle that we need to get taken care of. Uh, back in the early 2000s, uh, there was um, the Griggs County and Steel County Empowerment Zone. Um, there was a loan through the, I think, the State, Board, the State uh, Commerce Commission or State yeah. Trade Commission. Um, Griggs County must have at some point guaranteed that loan through that uh, empowerment zone. Um, it's been part of that loan was satisfied, part of that loan was written off quite some time ago by the Commerce Department. There's some litigation going on with that land right now. Um, Griggs County was named as a party, but we don't really need to be a party because the money situation was taken care of. Um, so I've been working with the attorney that. Um, one of the attorneys in the suit and we have determined that we should just um, file a satisfaction of mortgage and I provided one to Samantha for a signature uh, that would be my recommendation is just to sign them at the satisfaction of mortgage has been taken care of and um, that we not be involved in the suit that we have no business being in yeah it was it was just they they admitted one building when they when they right. when they had the satisfaction and they right. just were just catching that so we'll need a uh, motion to authorize the signing of the satisfaction or mortgage um yeah. in the breckheimer versus jacobson court case I'll make that motion. motion by tranby is there a second i'll second second by avriel all in favor signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. aye. There's a, there's a satisf satisfaction I provided to Sam. Um, no. Just needs to be signed by you and notarized. Opposed, same sign. Motion approved. Town appraisals. I think that's trend. Yeah. I talked to uh, Tasha Kruger. Um, she's got to send a letter out of a pr increase. She's going to do that next week or two. And that goes to Finley Elevator. So they get hold of the letter. And that letter is brought to the township meeting which is in April with the tech equalization meeting and they go after that okay so that's where we stand there yep and that'll be filed with the with correct. the tax yep. with, with the treasurer yes correct yep. okay anyway tax director position um, I did put it in the paper for two weeks didn't get anybody um, to apply just wanting to know what if you wanted me to do something different going forward, re-advertise in the paper. It is still on the website. It is still on Facebook. Um, just kind of wanting to know if you wanted to change anything going forward. Do we put it? Do we put it on the countywide? When we put associated counties, did we did one time too? Uh, I we do. Bo we boosted it once, right, and put yeah. it on there. Yep. End. Yep. I think we yep. should boost it again. Yeah. How about job service? Jo job service. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think in the meantime, we need to start looking at, you know, until somebody is hired, going into Allen Services, looking at a contract with him, because there's a lot of things that are going on now that are due. You got the homestead credit, you got the veterans, you've got the sales tax ratio due the end of March, you got the equalization coming up until June. I mean, there's a lot going on from now until then that we really need to stretch to fulfill. So I think we should revisit. Um, Alan coming in, filling in during the time until we get somebody hired. 
we could maybe do it, just post it out for another two weeks and then discuss that at the next meeting if you want to do that. Well, I yes, we can. But I if we're going if we're going to put this on a contract basis, we need to write the contract. We need to offer that out on the street for the two weeks. We need to set the terms of the contract. So it's not a, it's not as simple as, yeah, let's just go with the contract that was offered to us. We don't have the ability to take bids from the street. We, we solicit for the bids and then we process them and pick the best one. So we don't have to do that route though. That is what you suggest us to do, but that is not that is not something we have to do. We're not obligated to do that. Oh yes we are. Um, we can't spend we cannot spend we cannot spend taxpayers' dollars without determining best value. And so we have to determine what we want we have to outline the services wanted and then we put out a bid for that price and so that isn't my view on this that is what has to be done that again is your thought process and an option however we do have a contract in front of us that we can visit with alan and negotiate with him if there's terms in that contract that we would like to see changed or whatever but i would like to visit with alan and look over his contract he started to get a last year sales ratio so i would like to see somebody in here right away to start doing it again i don't want to set ourselves up to having the same thing we had last year that's my biggest fear so we we don't have the ability to pick and choose if some if we're going to allow contracts to be part of this process we need to allow anybody and everybody to put forward or bid on a contract we don't know if his price is <laughs> is what the price should be until we put it out in the street and determined get bids on it we put we get bids on everything stephanie that's how contracting works we don't allow someone to come to us and offer us a deal and say you can do that in a private entity you can't do that in a public entity someone could say some, someone could someone could say well i'll do it for a third money i'll do it for half the money somebody might say i need double the money the only way to determine best value is to put it out for bids that's why we bid everything and then how long is that going to take us because we do have a sales again i'm going to remind you guys that sales tax ratio study is due by the end of march and it is not and we also have the homestead credit that's due and we also have the veterans that is due so all of these duties are falling behind with with waiting and talking this every meeting getting nowhere stephanie there's a process that has to take place if you don't like the process then we can't get nothing done if you if you wanted to go with the process we have to sit down and we have to determine that we're going to put this out for bids and we have to write up a contract here's what we want then we put it out and people will come back and say yes i can do it for that amount but we need to lay out what we want done we can't let the private sector tell us what has to be done the century code is very specific on what the duties of the tax director are that's why we're putting it out as a job once we once we cross that line then it's open to everybody any one of us could bid this thing what's stopping what's stopping anybody from bidding the contract and if we if we cuddle up to one person we excluded a whole bunch of people that might have done it it's i've been doing contract government contracting for 35 years stephanie and i know the ins and outs of this thing and i know the pitfalls of it it's the way it According is. To our century code, the only thing we need bids on is fuel and road work. Otherwise, we can't accept this. The century code. Show me in the, the century, century code, code. Doesn't even allow Stephanie for contract tax director. <laughs> it's a position that, that it works just, at the it works at the pleasure of the county commission. It's a it's a staff position. We're stepping outside. What it, we're stepping outside. Person. We're stepping outside. What is even the position is? We're creating a new position, basically. A contract tax director. I would still like to visit with Alan and the next meeting and move forward. That is my opinion. Again, like John always says, one of five. Yep. But that is my opinion that I would like to move forward and get something done sooner than later because there is a lot of things that need to be done in the tax position. 
so just one thing as counsel for the county, I would like to draft the contract. I think that I think that as the employer, I think that we should we should be the ones that dictate the contract terms. So do we need to figure out a price so then or not? Yeah, that's another question. How do we want to do that? Well, the, the our, I suppose our, our what we offer for a yearly pay would probably be our price and one. Yeah. No, we on a contract you wouldn't offer it. You you would you would draft the contract. Here's the services that we require. Here and okay. then we have them to tell okay. us what it's going to cost. Okay. Once you get into the contract, I'm once you get into the contract portion of this, you have to allow for protest. You have to allow for somebody disputing the the outcome of the contract who you awarded it to. It's a long drawn out process that is. There's pitfalls in every step of it. So is there any way we could just have them, just have them do our ratio study again this year and then the tax credits just to get us by and then we could work on the contract from there? I mean, we've done that, in the, we've done that prior. We've, we've, pieced out, we've pieced out one item. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I know a contract basis for this is not what is envisioned in the century code. No. Well, but, but I mean, just what I'm saying is, can we hire the services? Yeah, hire the service out. You know, at least this year for, you know, get the ratio done, get these tax credits in, get that taken care of, and then work on that from there. Is there any way we can do that, or Jamie, do you not recommend that? Well, I don't see why we can't. I mean, we're gonna get in a position where we're behind the eight ball again. Yep. Um, I don't know. It's. It, I guess it has been advertised as a contract option, and I don't know if Sam's been contacted at all. Um, I guess. I. I guess what I can do is work on a contract for you guys' approval at the next meeting and see what you have to say about it. And then we can maybe talk. And to then. Him, maybe talk to them and come to the meeting and maybe be like, okay, this year maybe you know what is what are you going to charge us for this year? We could hire you for not as a contract, but just to do. The sales ratio and study and everything this year, and then work on a contract from there or whatever else. Well, does, if we get the doesn't he offer a month by month? That's what it was. That was what it was scheduled for before. Yeah. We brought. So if we can okay. get if we can get the contract out there, then him coming to the meeting if he's the only one that, that responded to the contract, right. then we're fine. Yeah. Okay. But to have to have him come to the meeting and and make okay. that that's where you you run into the problems is. Okay. I just didn't know if it's going to get too tight with the whole sales ratio study, and then we run it. We basically put our tit in the ring, ringer again, type of deal like we did last year. So I just, I'm just trying to meet one deadline with another, and I didn't know yeah. the, the, you know, can we hire them out part time for that, and then work on the contract as we do it? Is what I'm saying. Or, I guess maybe have Jimmy do a contract, you know, and put it out. And then see what you know. We'll keep we'll keep advertising the tax director like we've been doing before. And if it may have a contract, and then we'll see if anybody supplies back to it. You know, yeah. There's, at least it's uh, at least we got something out there for. Yeah. Otherwise, we're, we're I guess we're gonna be ready to eight ball again. Here we go. You know, well that's my opinion, but yeah, no, I I understand, yeah. but but we we could get ourselves into a position where we're really behind the eight ball because we've done something. Outside of well, yeah, I, outside of, of the but, norm. But well, if we had well, if we if we had Jamie write the contract and we put it out and then nobody replied and then if Alan came and if we at least would agree to hire him just on a month by month basis to get us through some of this, you know, not not saying that we hire him on a full time, but just uh, just to help us through this ratio of stuff. I mean, the first step is to get it out there, and I would assume Alan would would respond. Yeah. yeah. I okay. Mean, so, okay. So then yep. we've sat then we've satisfied the requirement of putting it out there. Everybody has a fair chance. I'll get a contract drafted for the next meeting for you guys to take a look at. Okay. You guys want me to advertise it in the paper? It is sixty four dollars and seventy two cents per week to advertise in the Griggs County Courier. But you start advertising yes. now if they look in that in contract. I don't want to waste any more time. And then 
put it on the website. Put, 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 put boost that out on the job services too, if it's not. Well, so we'll do it on the job service. I'll put it back on on Facebook. But it you guys want me to, like, I just don't know how much money, much more money you're wanting to put into this. Well, that, that's a thing. You know. Because if I boost it on Facebook, it does cost money to boost. Yeah. So I can boost it if you want, or do you want me to put it Could back you, into the do paper? You, do you have it? Uh, do you uh, can you put it on the Association of Counties website too? Right. That's the one I'm. You know, that's, and the cost that's probably that and job service. Options. Job yeah. service. I, I was under I was under the impression that we had somebody that was interested in the position. Yeah. And then uh, another thing too. Was uh, I incorrect in that? No, if, you do. If it does cost money to post it, is it coming out of that department's funds then? Or what? Um, I've been taking it out of General Courthouse. That's where all of our advertisements come out okay. of. So. Yeah. so that's why I've got, you know, like you said, money and costs. Mm -hmm. So, so what is know. the status of the person that was interested? I'm really back. I was under. I understood you've been talking to some of the. Yeah. He did talk. He did talk to me. That okay. was. That was. He hasn't. He hasn't applied. I mean, he has not put an application in, for example. Okay. So okay. If you look at that. You know, that's. The, we'll leave it at that. Okay. Right now. Okay. okay. <laughs> I did get word that there is maybe possibly somebody else that is interested, but I don't have. I don't have applications yet. from anybody. I don't. Yeah. I just have word of mouth. Is all, so. Yeah, they have to officially put it in. I mean, they got to. They got to apply for it. You know, that's just the way it is. Again, I would like kind of like with myself. When I need a nurse, I contract a nurse out, and that nurse knows that until I hire somebody, they will be working there. So it's like an open end contract that it's not guaranteed for for you know a, the whole year or whatever. It's you're working for me for until I can fill the position. So it's kind of like what this would be is like I need somebody to there now until we can find somebody full time. That's that's, something that's something what we're looking for. Is that something you could write in your contract? Open ended yeah. contract, yeah. month by month, until either position is filled or until we come to like give a thirty day notice, make it fair, or you know. But the sad part is, you hate to bring somebody in and they do the sales tax ratio, but we're in the middle of the whole entire equalization and everything else, and then we switch tax directors in the middle of that. That's hard to do. So once you start getting somebody in. You almost need the same person from the time we start doing the sales ratio study to the end of the equalization meeting, which is the second week in June. You know, so you kind of need somebody, the same person from, well, February, because of due March 31st, February until June, ideally. So if you could hire somebody just for that time to cover that, and then afterwards look for, I don't know, there, there's just so much that needs to be done, and right now I'm babbling you know spitballing ideas what needs to be done but i just do not want to get our county into the same scenario as we had last year because it's really embarrassing i agree <laughs> yeah remember how we got in that situation so anyway jamie's going to bring us a contract yeah and I mean, it, it has to mirror the qualifications of the job it's got to be on site it can't it can't it can't it's laid out what the what the duties are so Bring it to us and have everybody have a look at it. See where we're at. County background checks. Where um, are we at with that? So you guys do have a policy for the background checks, um, but I would like some more guidance of how to implement that. Um, if you want to do, you know, current employees, how do I do this for new hires? I just, I, yes, we have this policy, but I just don't know how to go forward so there are agencies that do it and I can see if I have some time to work with you to the next two days um, but there's agencies that do it I think if we're gonna be hiring people I think our people that are here have to follow the same standards that the people that are, are going to work for us have to go through so I think that it should be retroactive to all the employees that are here um, you can't really change I mean it's not really fair to the people that are going to be coming to work here if, if we have some sort of standard and and um, standard for the new hires the, versus yeah, the old people haven't here. passed them. So I'm going to do I'll do some checking with some other counties and see where they go. But um, 
I, I suppose we'll have to come to the commission and talk to you about what we what kind of standards we're going to have um, as far as if there's something that's permissible or or if nothing's permissible um, I think that's the next thing that we we need to talk about and I'll do some check-in to see what other counties do or how far they go I know Nelson County's had some individuals that have had some DUIs um, and that hasn't precluded employment um, from the, the positions so um, it just depends on how fussy, I shouldn't say how fussy, but it depends on what standard you guys want to have. But, it, but for each, a DWI, for instance, might not preclude... Uh, it works in a courthouse, but somebody does, because they kind of drive a truck, it's a whole different yeah. ball. Right, 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 yep. Yeah, I agree. So it has, yeah. to be, it has to be position specific. I think a lot of them, what they look for is felonies. Yeah, felonies or crimes against children or right, okay. crimes of dishonesty, things like that. Okay. Legacy fund, that's the dollars that, that were to the road department and that's we're just setting up the... Yep, I just got your guys' uh, account set up, so there and that's it is. And in, in the C, that's in a C, a C fund. fund. Yep, okay. it's not within the general fund, so it's okay. a 2163 so, account. So that way it's separate, we don't include it in our budget. It is on its own, so yeah. if you want to know where those monies went, how much monies we have, it is all within its own okay. budget. Yeah. So we can More importantly, it rolls over on a yearly basis, so you don't have to use them. It, it can decrease, increase, and it just rolls over. It doesn't affect the levy. On, on the note of, of legacy fund, um, I was out in D.C. a week and a half ago at some meetings, and they were talking about the new I IFR that came out in, in November regarding ARPA money. We're going to have to re-examine our what we've spent our fund to make sure that it qualifies because they, they keep on moving the target. The feds keep on moving the target, and I want to make sure that we have money spent on the right things so it doesn't come back and bite us. What's ARPA? ARPA. The, the ARPA, ARPA funds, funds you guys American allocate. Investment, the fund, the one that was, we got the, what, a couple hundred thousand dollars? A hundred thousand dollars. It was in 50. Oh, we were calling it COVID funds. Nope. These nope. are different. These are ARPA. So ARPA funds, you guys used 50,000 to purchase the radios oh, yeah. for the sheriff's yeah, office yeah. and the DES. The other tranche came in. Those have not been allocated yet. Got it. Yeah. So we have to we have to allocate that by the end of 2024. It has to be spent by the end of 2026. But since we have allocated that money, they've changed the rules again, which is typical. But um, there are a bunch of counties that um, we're going to have to reallocate that money because it didn't appear that they were going to be able to use it for what they were going to what they had a plan on okay. using it for. So are we, are we okay with radio thing with that? I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I need to get a list from every, from Nelson County and Griggs County and, and make sure and go back and check to make sure that we're okay. I don't know yet. Okay. I'm guessing we are. Um, you just want to make sure. But we just need to double check it based on that rule change just to make sure that we're not going to, yeah. they're not going to claw that money back from us. Can those go towards new software ideas? I guess I would like Can to. Can you check into that, Jamie? Yeah. A lot of counties have used their ARPA funds for that. Yep. For the software upgrade that you need to do? Yep. Oh, good. So anyway, that legacy fund, you'll see that now when we do the budgets. That'll be a, that will be one of the budget line items or items. Um, Garrison Diversion Matching Recreational Grant Letter. That, that's been dispersed to the appropriate Entities, the cities. Yeah, I think they get the same letter if we get okay. get that. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. Um, there's a games of games of chance permit that we'll need to. Uh, so you guys have authorize. one on the back of your packet. Um, I did get. I did tell the family that we do need additional information um, because the state does need more than just what they gave us. Okay. So this morning I did get the um, revised application. Um, it's for the same people 
um, it, they just needed, we, I just needed the addresses and the values and the everything. So I do have it if you would like to see it, um, but it, yeah, it's for the same people. Okay, so everything, uh, everything appears to be up to. Yep, so then all of this gets, Still goes here. to the state. Have, have a look at it and then we'll vote on it. It's Hogan, right? Yes. Hogan, yeah. The Hogan. Yeah, and we do have the the dollar for the fee There's for it. Okay, yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the Holman family raffle on June twenty third, two thousand twenty four. Motion by Tranby to approve the Hogan family raffle. Is there a second to that? Yeah. Oh, they must have moved that. I'm sorry, because it says June 2nd on That's what it says there. Yeah, no, that's fine. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Avery. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. same aye. sign. Opposed, same sign. Excuse me. Permit approved. Old courthouse, new courthouse. Future business. So at your next meeting, we do have CPT gonna give you guys a uh, presentation on the other county software option that we have. Could you pass forward to them the same? <laughs> so you don't want a demo? No. no we don't need a demo. I thought that's what you had asked for that the last meeting well, is you wanted well, to see uh, what it looked down like. What they offered and I mean, it goes yeah, over my head. if you it's a demo, I mean, it's yeah. as long as it's like a five or ten minute, not yeah. a thirty minute type yeah. of deal. Yeah, because you guys, we we'll, won't we'll ever use it. You no, guys, we'll it's, we're administrative. Guys. We're we're, yeah. we're not. I mean, it's nice to know what the software is going like, to yeah. look like and everything like that, but we don't need a thirty minute break. No. Type of deal. With government, it's functional or not. Yeah, <laughs> those are the that's the guidelines. It isn't. It, it is. It isn't fancier, fancier or, or less fancy. That's not a. That's not a something we look at. It's functional or non-functional cost basis for what we're getting. So I mean if they don't even want if they don't want to zoom they they can just give us the, the breakdown of the costs. Yeah. But I mean if if they, if they want to zoom so we can ask them a few questions, that's fine too. Um, and then the other um, software people, the software innovations um, we were supposed to, like I said before, um, we were supposed to have a demo with them. Um, they canceled at the last minute, um, said that they were going to set something up. We have not heard from them to set something up. We did reach out to them to get them to come to your meeting. We have not heard back from them. I just think that this is kind of showing what kind of customer service we would get from them if we did go. So I, I mean, we can't do much about it at that point. We can't get a hold of anybody. So. Right. Reach out to them on a price and you don't have to come to the meeting. See if they'll provide a price. Yeah. Software innovation? Yeah. Or just CPT? No, both of them. See if they'll provide a price. Okay. And and then once once we have the price and we can evaluate the services for that price and determine whether or not they're worthy or not. <clears throat> Any other future business? That's it, I contract. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. You'll put that on. If not, I'll make a motion to adjourn. A motion by Tranby to adjourn. Second? I'll second that. I'll second that. <laughs> everybody, wa everybody wants out. Second by Avril and Zorn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Meeting adjourned at 11.28. Thanks, guys. Thank Next regular meeting, this room, February 5th at 9.30 a.m. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, your